Remember last video where we made this? This is pretty useful. You can hide parts of your screen and it's really fun to troll your friends, for example. However, more often than not, instead of hiding something, you need to see something. For example, we go to the docs and grab a random useful page that we might need. Let's go to GUIs, um, to a GUI object, let's add picture, we'll get to that. And let's say uh, we want this code, although we would just copy it, right? Well, I wouldn't, but usually would. Uh, let's grab this for no reason. And now, boom, we got the screenshot and now we can see it in any window. Let's move to the terminal, it's still there. It's always on top. Uh, and as you can see, there's no title bar, yet I can move it by clicking on it. When I double click on it, it disappears. Holy shit, that is so useful. Incredibly useful, honestly. First of all, let me give you an idea of uh, how that idea came into mind. Like a year ago, or a bit more, when I started learning AutoHotKey, um, I was learning from Joe Glines, the uh, most popular, I guess, uh, HK YouTuber. And he had this thing that he takes a screenshot and then it hovers over his screen and never ever since then i wanted the same exact thing and i've managed to do it but in a far simpler fashion with no dependencies i think pretty sure no dependencies so let's get to the code i'll show it off and then explain some more things uh screenshot yeah, hover screenshot. Yeah, indeed. There's no dependencies. Have a look at this code. Now coming back to, first of all, we're taking screenshots with Windows built-in screenshotter. You can access it by pressing Windows Shift S. And here it is. Or, um, there's actually a setting. It's hard to talk and type at the same time. Print screen. It's not what I was searching for. Print. Uh huh. This. You can turn on this setting so when you press print screen, this pops up as well. So, I've made hotkeys on my mouse uh, to press print screen and you're expecting me to say something else. What else would I possibly need? Well, the thing is, let me show you. Let's do a message box with nothing. Here it is. I try to press that hotkey. It doesn't work. The print screen isn't recognized, unfortunately. Why? Because it's a remap. So if you do a remap, it will have better performance as remaps do, but keep in mind that it won't work in Windows created by AutoHotKey. So for that reason I made uh, another hotkey that works regardless. And this hotkey actually sends Windows Shift S. Might be useless, but for some people it could be useful information uh, for implementing screenshotting um, in an easier way. Now, how do we access those screenshots? Turns out that there's actually a folder into which 
your screenshots are automatically saved. As you saw, I didn't actually save the file manually. I just grabbed it immediately. And it's in this folder. I'll leave the path in the description. However, this part of it might be different for you. I am not sure. So, uh, when you get to this, uh, then you can search for this folder. So, first of all, try the actual path by putting your actual username in here. And let's hope it works. Uh, so here, as you can see, there are two of those, two of these, two of these. They go in groups of two. Why is that? I only took one screenshot and one screenshot here and one screenshot here. What is this? Kind of strange, isn't it? Well, that's because when you take a screenshot, it takes two of them. One, the actual screenshot with the same height and width, and another for this window. Oh, perfect. Well, in this case, we could do a loop files and just show the correct uh, screenshot in, uh, in this window. So we don't have to choose, it just automatically picks, picks the correct one. Well, the shit thing is, you wouldn't know. So usually, the most recent one is the one for the small window. But sometimes it's not. Alright, so I implemented uh, a way, so it automatically presents both of those, and then whatever you click at, the other gets deleted. So you can choose basically but in a faster fashion. But then it turns out that even two could be wrong and it's actually three and then four. So I just decided to have a way to pick. And I specified this path to the, to the screenshots folder as the default. However, if you intend to use a different path for whatever reason, maybe it's not for screenshots, but just for pictures, you can do that. Holy shit, I am not sure which folder would be safe. Content, I guess? No pictures there. Well, I don't know. Basically, you can pick any picture that you want. Any picture with a small caveat, which usually won't matter. And that's why we got into add picture and I completely forgot where I was going with this. Here are the formats that you can use in this function that I wrote and overall in add image, which is actually how we add that image. Simple enough. So screenshots by default, by default are PNG. As you can see, it's supported automatically. Uh, JPEG and GPG also work. They were tested by me. Other things should also work. I think GIF works, but it doesn't move by default. And here's how to make it move, apparently. Uh, so yeah, that's something to consider, but probably not. You're not really going to have a BMP picture all that often. And even that is supposed to work. Cool. And uh, I think I already explained that you take a screenshot, call this function, pick it, here it is, you can move it, double click it. Now let's get to how it actually works. So first of all, you select a file. This is the default, once again, going to be left in the description, or if I don't know. I am not even sure why you would, but the path isn't here in paths. Uh, so saved. Mm -hmm. Here it is. Boom. 
in local app data, and it should be here. I mean, you can import this class, but it's kind of ridiculous <laughs> because every almost every single file is specific to only me. But yeah, I want to show off the idea of a paths class as much as possible for people to find an easier solution to tracking file paths that they use in multiple occasions or even in a single location. I think it's a good idea. And yeah, by default, uh, it's just PNG. The reason I do that is here you only see the actual screenshots and the small screenshots. But in the actual folder, there are also JSON files here. It's not a big deal, but it's annoying enough for me to set the default SPNG. And don't worry, you can change that. So it's up to you. Now, if I didn't find anything, return false, meaning nothing happened. <coughs> now we create an always on top uh, GUI plus tool window. I should just keep it here, I guess. Uh, tool window uh, removes the icon in the title bar, not in the title bar, in the tray bar. Someday, someday I'll learn how to speak. Uh, and it's kind of strange that it's plus tool window when really it's minus tool window, but okay. Minus caption, oh, I got completely lost, lol. Minus caption removes the title bar. However, even without the title bar, there would be this margin that is in a white color. So the screenshot would be surrounded by white colored margins, which you can technically change. However, we most definitely don't need them and I'm going to explain how I dealt with them. When set trans color, I got the color of that background color. Mm, yeah, mm -hmm, great. Let me show you what it looks like initially. See, it's not too bad. And maybe you even like it. Makes it easier to understand where the picture is and when the real thing is. I don't, though. So, I took this color and used when set trans color of this color to be transparent. Perfect. And we got the win title of the GUI with the handle property of the GUI object. Easy enough. Now we do auto size uh, and not available. So at least in theory, yeah, uh, when it pops up, it doesn't take the focus of the previous window. But once you click it and move it around, yeah, it will. It's a small thing that mostly won't matter, but I like it. Now, these three things, which I find quite nice. How many times have I popped it off? Hold on. Let's make it another time. By the way, what's the correct way to say this? And another or just another? I never know. I hope uh, someone in the comments actually knows how to speak. <laughs> so, on click, we'll get to that. If you watched my previous video, you already know how this works. But it's actually a step backwards. So we're gonna convert it to the smarter method I use now. It works the same exact way, but it's easier to maintain. So, on click, we do something that we're gonna get to. On escape, while the window is active, we destroy it. 
Same goes for double clicks. Turns out there's an on event for escape and it's automatically when the window is active. I used to always use the hotkey function to make a hotkey to destroy my GUIs. Turns out that's really not necessary. Getting to this, let me show you something. This is the same exact thing. However, in my opinion, worse. Well, it does the same thing, it's just not as understandable. By post message OXA1, comma 2, you have no idea what that actually does. And I don't explain it in the comment, which is my bad, I guess, but I like making variables, functions, and so on that explain themselves clearly rather than writing comments. I should still, but I'm too lazy. Now, what this actually does, press title bar. Now that's quite a bit more understandable. Essentially, it makes the window think that you're pressing its title bar. So this thing. So on click, when we click, we send a message to this window, making it think that we're pressing the title bar. And as you know, when you hold down the title bar, you can move the window. It's a pretty smart, but somewhat hacky way to do this. However, is just one line and uh, it works. Once again, in the previous video, I already explained how all of this works. So, if you want to clear up what's happening here, you can watch my previous video. It's gonna be a link in the description. Now, coming back to this, once everything is done, it returns true. You don't really need the return true and you don't need to specifically return false, but this is a better practice. Say you run this function and after it you want to do something, but obviously only if the function actually ran correctly. And when you return values that tell you something, there is something that you can do. If not, or rather, if um, screenshot mm -hmm, hover screenshots, then you can do something. But if it's false, if it didn't work like you expected it to, nothing happens. So I recommend uh, actually returning values in your functions. Well, that's actually it. Hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it, it was helpful for you. Goodbye!